So San Jose State has hired Ken Niamatololo to become their new head football coach. And if you pay attention to college football, you know Ken Niamatololo comes to San Jose State after a really successful run at Navy, where I guess you could probably argue how successful was it. He was fired, but for 15 years, he was the head coach at Navy and did a bang-up job. And eventually, the... Standard started to slip just a little bit, got let go, went to UCLA to become their director of leadership, was in set to become a full-time assistant at UCLA under Chip Kelly before taking the head coaching job at San Jose State. And I wonder if the service academy style of play transfers to other college football programs. Because there is an absolute, like, it is undeniable that there is a certain style you have to play as a service academy because you have essentially one arm tied behind your back. You can't have kids that are the same size as Power Five offensive linemen at Navy, Air Force, and Army. Doesn't like literally. It's it's not a you can't get them. It's you cannot have them. And so I wonder if that style of play that Ken Niamatololo has, for the most part, perfected. Navy was in the top 25 for a big stretch there during the middle portion of Ken Niamatololo's tenure at Navy. Keenan Reynolds was a legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate, should have been, in my estimation, a finalist, and potentially might should have, should have took home the damn thing at one point. But I wonder if you can use that style of play outside of service academies. If you can get kids to buy into the fact of what you're trying to do because the style of play, and it's not just strictly flex bone, triple option. It's a mindset as much as it's a strategy, as much as it is a scheme, a system, et cetera. Does it work in a group of five setting like, San Jose State. And the obvious the obvious point is to point towards when Paul Johnson left Navy to go to Georgia Tech. And it worked. They were playing the New Year's Six Bowl games until they weren't. And this might lead to a bigger question in the college football landscape that, that we might tackle at some point here during the downturn. It is just how important is it in the grand scheme of things for you to have a pathway from your college football program to the NFL for your players. How important is it that you are pumping out NFL caliber players or guys who see a path to the league from your program? And and we we see it more and more that the the gap, and I, I mentioned last week, that the gap between the Power Five and the Group of Five is only widening. And it's only widening it's not only widening in coaches, salaries, facilities, resources, et cetera. It's also widening in the guys who are chosen in the three days of the NFL draft. You're seeing more players taken from the SEC, Big Ten, Pac-12, formerly Pac-12, ACC, Big 12, than you are from the Sun Belt, Mountain West, American, Mac, etc. And that makes sense, but the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. So when you are recruiting, how important is it that your players feel like they have a path to the NFL? Because it's San Jose State, obviously they don't have a ton of dudes who you're putting into the league. And you're already are kind of fighting an uphill battle if that is something that of recruit values. If they were if they value how much you're going to develop them and put them in the NFL, San Jose State's not likely to be a great option for them. But then when you couple that with the fact that now you are looking potentially at like offensive linemen, quarterbacks, and wide receivers are not going to be developed in an offense that is going to showcase virtually any attributes they'll need for an NFL future. Does that, does that matter? Because at army Navy and air force, 
you don't have to worry about having an NFL future because your future is decided for you. You don't care whether or not you're being developed, prepared for the next step of your football career because you're being developed and prepared for the next step of your life career, of your duty and your service to the country. So you don't have to deal with those questions. Now, that's another recruiting nightmare. It's another recruiting issue that you have to find kids who are okay knowing that rather than going to play for the Washington Commanders, you're going to have to submit to the orders from Washington Commanders. I'm I'm certain that that's not easy to find the best players in America who are willing to be in that situation. But conceivably, San Jose State is in a completely different spot than Army, Navy, and Air Force, right? that they are looking for the best college football players that they can get. That there is no duty attached to coming to San Jose State. Now, I believe, and and I think, I, I hate, I'll just tell you, I hate the introductory coach press conferences because everybody says the same BS the exact same way. We're going to win the right way. We're going to create a better culture. We've got to change the culture here. We're going to do things the way, the right way. It's like, okay, well, shut up. Some of you are going to be like, it's the same thing as like a high school graduation speech that like there are doctors and lawyers in this audience. Like, yeah, there are truck drivers and felons too. Like it's not all sunshine daisy. Like there are domestic violence (laughs) <laughs> there are domestic violence perpetrators in the audience, okay? Like, stop it. But I believe Ken Niamatololo when he says part of his mission to be a head coach at San Jose State is to create better men, equip men with the character and qualities to become better husbands, better better citizens, etc. Because you've got, you know, this 15-year history of that's sort of what you're doing at the Naval Academy, right? You don't ne- necessarily care if Kaipanoa, Kayaku, and Hata goes on to become a very good quarterback in the NFL, you know that he needs to go on to become a very good commander in the United States Navy. So I don't think it's poppycock, malarkey, balderdash, other words that insinuate bullshit when Ken Niamatololo says that that's what he ultimately cares about. But does that matter to recruits coming into San Jose State? That I don't know. So I I wonder, a question if, because I think and I've mentioned this on the podcast before, that there are just schools in certain conferences that are always going to be fighting an uphill battle. For instance, like Purdue in the Big Ten or Mississippi State slash Vanderbilt in the SEC, Iowa State in the Big 12, that you can't line up and do what everybody else is going to do because they're going to have better players at it than you are. Back in the day, could Iowa State have lined up in the wishbone Or could Kansas State have lined up in the wishbone and tried to shove Oklahoma around? Yeah, they could have, and it didn't work. Could South Carolina have lined up in the I formation and tried to run the ball down Georgia's throat? Yeah. Yeah, they could have. And there's a reason that they weren't very successful doing it because you don't have the same resources. You don't have, it's not a level playing field. So you have to do something different, right? It's why Mike Leach works at Texas tech and Washington state. It's why Joe Tiller works at Purdue. It's why even like, up to the last couple of years, it's why like Barry Alvarez works at Wisconsin. It's why Paul Christ works at Wisconsin because you are doing something different. And it doesn't have to be throw the football every play or run the football every play, but you have to do something different because you're, you're never playing on an even playing field. And so I, I would, if you are one of those schools and nobody wants to admit, by the way, that they are in that hierarchy of their, of their conference where you are to the point of like, Hey, running the flex bone, running the triple option, like you're a service Academy might be the best option for you. Nobody wants to admit that, but you couldn't be successful at that for a certain amount of time. And I I just wonder what that length of time is on how successful you can be, because there's obviously a shelf life, right? The, The other issue is, is that what comes about is the after you, you are either committing to a service Academy style of play for a very long time, because if you don't, you're going to go through a downturn for a couple of years when you get away from that. 
Georgia Tech went through the Paul Johnson, you could call it an experiment or whatever, where they had success, where they were playing in the Orange Bowl, playing in the ACC championship game. But when he departs, you either have to commit to hiring somebody who runs a similar style of offense or is committed to running a service academy style. Or you have to be able to put up, be willing to put up with two or three years of bad football because it's a, it's an entirely different recruit. It's an entirely different mindset. It's an entirely different system. And switching that up takes time. So there's certainly there 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 is history there that shows that you can play a service academy style of football outside of that situation and be successful. I don't know if San Jose State is the place that that happens. I I would like to think so. I would like to think that because I I happen to enjoy that style of play. I if you're gonna when NCAA when college football 25 from EA Sports comes out later this summer, I, I'm gonna run. From the flex bone triple option. I'm going to run the option out of the pistol. I'm going to, like, if you got to just choose, hey, this is how you're going to operate your style of play. Like, if I was going to be a head coach, I would want to play that way. I'd want to run the triple option. So I have, like, a, a soft spot there for Army, Navy, Air Force, Kenny Amatololo. Because I would, I would love to see that become more prevalent in college football. It's one of the things that I love about the sport is that there are so many different drastically styles of offense rather than the NFL where everybody runs the West Coast offense, uh, single back. You can now see some diversity that there are core teams that just go shotgun all the time and are uh, poorly emulating the air raid offense. But for the most part, there are two styles of offense in the NFL where, hell, you might have six styles of offense in one conference in college football. It's what I love about it, that you could have one team is going to play. We're going to chuck the pig. We're going to hashtag chuck, chuck the pigskin 50, 60 times. And the other team is going to say we might throw the ball twice today. So I, I, I hope and pray that that style of play becomes more prevalent because I think it makes only the sport become more interesting when you can see the mismatch coming and you can see the great equalizer that is service academy style football. I just wonder how much more difficult it is to run that style in a situation where you haven't effectively brainwashed your players into mindlessly following whatever directions they are to be given. But I think it's an interesting exercise, and it's one that I hope, from a selfish standpoint, is wildly successful and other schools, other programs, universities, teams, athletic directors take note and say, if that's working at San Jose State, why can't it work at my school? Why can't we have that success and dive into the ranks of the triple option, dive into assistance from service academies? I hope it's been successful. I really do. Because I think it makes the sport as a whole more interesting. And I think that's a good thing 100 times out of 100. So it's something we'll watch closely in 2024 and hopefully 2025 and 2028 and 2029. I hope Ken Niamatololo turns San Jose State into a juggernaut operating the way he'd like to operate because I, I think college football as a whole is better for it. And not only from just an offense and interesting perspective, but Ken Niamatololo kind of got like a bad rap at Navy because he told, you know, his assistants, like if your kids have a dance recital and you're here at the office, I'm going to be pissed. If you are not at home taking care of your families, if you are not doing the things that you need to be doing as fathers and as husbands, I'm going to be pissed. I'm going to fire. He and Bruce Arians was sort of the same way at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, Like I'm going to fire your ass. If I ever find out that you missed, you know, a family Christmas because you were out recruiting or whatever, I'll fire you on the spot. I think there are more coaches and more leaders that could act that way. And I think the sport only gets better because of that, because right now there's a, there's a, a wide gap between how much you have to work in college football and how much you have to work in the NFL. And at some point, all the great coaches are going to make more money with less headaches and less responsibility in the NFL in college football will suffer because of that. I don't want to see that. So I hope for a variety of reasons. San Jose State is uber successful with Ken Amatololo becoming their head coach because I think the sport overall grows and is better for it. That'll do it for today's episode of the Daily Huddle. 
Appreciate you making us a part of your day, however it is, wherever it is you're doing so. Back at it tomorrow. If you're watching here on YouTube, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you're getting all the great college football content that we're pumping out here on Saturday Glory. If you're listening on the podcast feed, drop a five-star review. It goes a long way in helping out the channel. See you tomorrow here on the Daily Huddle of Saturday Glory.